Hello, this is Gio, and hey, we're still working on my Flight 2000 Stern project here. And what I've been working on lately is I essentially replaced all the standard <clears throat> bulbs with LED lights. And that's great. Uh, it reduces the energy output, makes things a little more efficient, a little brighter. You can pick even different colors, etc. But uh, for these old Stern machines, it does pose an issue. Okay, so I turned on the machine, it started a game, and I just want to show you uh, a thing right here. Now, if you zoom in right here to these back lights here, these are some control lights, and you can kind of tell that they're flickering. And I don't know if there's another one. This one flickers a little bit. These ones flicker pretty um, readily. They all kind of flicker at different rates. This one's supposed to blink, so. But, um, so that's the problem with LEDs and these Stern machines. They're not 100% compatible. But there are a couple of ways you can fix this issue. Now I'm actually gonna show you both ways today. Um, one I've already kind of started with, but I'm gonna kind of backtrack on it for the alternative better way. But uh, if you look at the lights right here, here I'll uh, hit some of these little, kind of turn those on. You can see these ones don't flicker. I essentially have corrected the flicker in these particular lights. Um, and I'll, sh I'll, I'll lift up the play field and show you how I did that. Okay, so I lifted up the play field here, got some light uh, so we can look at those lights, those particular lamps that I was uh, telling you about. Now, they are here. Here's like, uh, the power is off. Um, here's one, two, three. All these generally work and you can see kind of the LED lights are in there. And the reason these work is because I installed this little resistor. You can see there's a resistor here, resistor here, etc. And these are, these are actually one ohm, uh, I think, uh, a quarter amp or something resistors. And um, I think you're actually supposed to use like um, one and a half ohms is more of the standard, but I didn't have one and a half ohms, so I used the one ohm resistors. And these are pretty cheap solutions. You just kind of solder, you kind of, uh, the terminals here on both sides of the terminals, you just solder the resistor, it doesn't matter which way it is. And this generally solves that flicker problem. But this only solves it for each individual lamp. Now, if you want to do the whole play field, you have to install these things for every single lamp. And I started it, and I was going, well, this is ridiculous. I'm going to uh, do the faster, yes, more expensive way, but easier way, and I'll show you that next. And here's the solution. It's a brand new board. It's a new uh, lamp driver board. Um, this is an Alltech, um, the ultimate lamp LED driver board. You can see it right here and this is what it is. Now this is not the cheapest solution. I think this cost me about, um, if I recall, about $99. It comes with this little wire. Now uh, on one of my older videos I did install uh, one of these boards. I forgot which pinball, but I wasn't really interested in installing it for just LED conversion. Um, there was a lot of lamps that weren't working properly and I didn't really want to deal with diagnostic uh, diagnosing the issues on the lamp board. So I just bought a new Alltech board and installed it. Now, for this project, I'm interested in LED conversion. And so the big issue is with this little wire. You have to connect this wire to um, some of your existing wires in your, in your back box uh, over there. Now I do have a few uh, lamp issues. There's a couple of lamps that I, or a couple of um, lamps that are I think locked on or locked off. Uh, some of them don't even work here. Um, it may or may not be related to the board but I'm gonna install this board and hopefully all my lamp issues on my play field will be resolved. Um, but again mostly I'm interested in the LED conversion. So we're gonna install this board in the back box. But before I install the board into the box, I'm going to remove uh, these resistors that I installed um, to bring back the pinball to its original condition.
Okay, so here's the back box open and kind of zooming in here, you have a variety of boards inside, including the um, MPU board there. And this is the lamp driver board right here. And this is what we're going to be replacing with this new Alltech board. Now, the first step is pretty easy. You just take out these plugs here, there's four of them, and you unscrew and remove this board and replace it with the new board. Reinsert the plugs, which are pretty self-explanatory. You just really only uh, you have four plugs, and they can only fit into the, their specific little sockets here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so just reach in here, and we're going to just carefully remove these little plugs. Now you want to do this very gentle because the pins underneath can easily be bent. If they do get bent, you can just take a, your finger or some pliers and kind of. Um, kind of bend them back in. Here I need a little flathead to undo these screws. Like that. And carefully, we might have to pinch some of the remaining clips here so that they release. Here's the old board. So the new board, you just reverse the process, making sure it's you just follow the prints, so the prints kind of uh, in the right direction, and you just carefully get some of these wires out of the way here. Now the holes aren't lining up perfectly, but it's it's still pretty good, so you just have to... Now the board's supposed to match all the holes, but this one's a little bit hard to get in uh, the screw. But it's pretty ho much holding with these clips and the one screw I have there, so I don't think I'll force it. I could probably force a little uh, bracket behind it to kind of fit in, force it in, but I think I'll just leave it there and just go ahead and re-plug in all the plugs. And now each one of these plugs should have a little pin in it that prevents um, kind of putting it in the wrong place. And, and these little pins here, there should be one missing in each one uh, that kind of match the little plug in these little uh, plugs here. And so you just line them up and they all should have different numbered pins, so just be aware of which one you're doing. This one has a plug right there and has a missing pin right there. So it's pretty easy to get in. And you kind of want to line up the plug with the pins as best you can. Uh, you don't want to force it in and bend those pins and just gently stick it in like that. And there we have it. We have the new Alltech board in our pinball with everything plugged in. Now if you weren't doing a LED conversion, you'd be done now. You could just turn on the power and everything will be good. But we're doing an LED conversion and the big difference is we got to install this little wire here. Now this wire has two ends. It has a little uh, plug end like this and then just a bare, bare wire end on this side. Now the little plug end goes to this uh, TP13 connection which is on the upper left hand corner right here and you can just plug that in. But before we do that we need to attach the bare wire end to the backboard door here. Now I went ahead and closed the door to kind of show you what you got to consider next. Now there are what's called general illumination lights and then there's control lights. Uh, most of what's down here on the play field, well, a lot of them are control lights, like all these ones that lit up here that were flickering control lights. And then general illumination lights would be, let's say, underneath some of these uh, plastics. 
move around here, you can kind of see them there. And the general illumination lights are on all the time. And the control lights are just like what they say. They control things. You know, things light up as you hit switches, etc. Now, it's the control lights that tend to flicker. The general illumination lights do not flicker and is not corrected by the Alltech board. And so, what you want to do is figure out which um, lights on your um, back box door here are general illumination and which are control. Now, for this particular pinball, it's kind of easy to figure out which one's control. You got these little uh, black little um, shields here, and these are generally the control lights. I think you have a tilt here, you have match point, there's a couple of other things um, that turn on and off depending on what the setting or where you are in the game. The rest of them are all basically general illumination lights. So one of the things you could do uh, if you had the power on is just hit the button, uh, the self-test button here, and that will display all the control lights and you can figure out which control lights um, are on your backboard and which ones are general illumination lights. Now, unfortunately, uh, I don't really want to turn on the power yet until I'm done with the, uh, the board installation, but unfortunately also my self-test button for some reason doesn't work right now and that's something I have to fix. Uh, it's probably just a loose wire. So if you don't know which one's the general illumination lights and which one's the control lights, again, you know, first clue is, you know, you have some isolated lights like this. But if you're looking back, uh, you could figure it out for yourself. First, the general illumination lights are generally in sequence where you can see here, here's one connected to two wires, connected to another one, connected to another one. And you can just kind of follow these along until uh, they hit a wire or two thicker wires like this. Here's a red wire, thick red wire, and a thick blue wire, or excuse me, uh, white wire. And then it just continues. In, in this particular backboard, you actually have two lines of general illumination. Here's another one. Uh, this one's not as neat as this one. This one kind of goes out like that, comes in, etc., splits off. But you can kind of see the trend. The wires themselves, here's a thicker, um, what, orange wire here, and then here's a thicker green wire here. Um, so they don't necessarily have to be really close to each other, but you can generally find them. Now, the control lamps are different. There is a thicker wire, but they also have a thinner um, stripe wire. And here's an example here. You get something isolated, more isolated, and you can look in front to figure out which one this is. But you can see there's a thicker, or there's two thick wires here, but essentially a thicker wire on one side, and then a thinner wire with stripes on the other side. So this is a control light. Uh, looking around some more. You can see down here, same thing right here. Uh, here's a control light. A thicker wire right here, and then a thinner wire with a stripe. Uh, some stripe, here's a brown and with a black stripe here. Uh, you can kind of follow this line. This is generally another one here. Um, actually, this is a, not quite sure what that is, but here's another control light. Actually, this one I have to kind of reinforce, but here's that thicker. Uh, wire and then here is a Not sure brown and red stripe. There's a red stripe there. So this is thinner. So that's a control light So now again, we want to connect um, This ends plug into the wire into the uh, TP 13 plug there and Then connect the other side uh, in this case We'll probably have to solder if we had kind of connecting wires like here uh, Actually would be a good thing. We can kind of wrap it around this and without soldering, but I always recommend soldering to make sure these connections are good. But I'm gonna pick this control light here, mainly because it's close to this plug. And when you open and shut the door, you don't want this uh, line. It, it, it's a pretty long wire, but uh, you don't want it stretched and kinda pull things out. So you want you want to pick a control light that is close. So this is the one we're gonna do. So now that we picked a light we want to connect to, which wire end do we connect to? Well, uh, the instructions for the Alltech uh, say connect it to the side which is has the thicker wire. So not the stripe one, but the one with the thicker wire. So I'm going to go ahead and solder um, the bare end 
to this thicker end right here. All right, so uh, since I'm going to solder this, I went ahead and kind of trimmed off uh, the end of this wire. I added a little bit of solder to kind of tin it and added some solder on the other side. So I'll just kind of combine them in here now. Oops, bad angle. There you go. It's nice and tight. Okay, and now I'm just going to plug in uh, the plug end of the wire to the TP13. It's right there. It doesn't go in that easily, but it will. And there you go. And then after you're done, just sort of try to get this wire into an orderly state so it won't be flopping around just like that. And I think we're done. We can close her up and test her out. And there you go. Everything's on. Uh, let's go ahead and start a game and see what we can see. Cycle through. And there you go. These lights back here, which were flickering quite a bit, are nice and stable. Uh, let's go ahead and hit these. I've, I took the resistors off these. <laughs> These work. The T was not working, and now it does work. Uh, let's try some of these lower ones. All right, all those work. Um, I think it works pretty well. This one is not flickering anymore. This one's not flickering anymore. I think this works really well. Um, I do think a couple of these are still out, so it may not have been a backboard. Maybe it's a bulb or some kind of connection issue, but uh, it does work. And now I have a full LED pinball. So I hope this video helped you out, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.